Hello, Albie with Thinking Outside the Long Box here with Z, the founder of Serenity Forge. Uh, we're here today to talk to him about some of his exciting games that are out now. Um, could you tell me a little bit about Serenity Forge and what it's like to be the founder of a video game company? Yeah, absolutely. So Ser Serenity Forge is a Boulder-based video game company that focuses on development and publishing. Uh, we mostly focus on projects that are on the PC and also console, so Xbox and PS4 and Nintendo Switch. Uh, the Switch being probably our most uh, uh, invested in platform right now. So you know, being being the the founder it really just means that you are stuck doing a lot of, a lot of the stuff that. Uh, no one else wants to do in a small <laughs> team like ours. Uh, we're only 14 people, okay. uh, so so a lot of the stuff that we're doing is it's like you know we have our programmers and artists, and then there's all this sound stuff that no one really wants to deal with, and then now I have to kind of step in and do that. <laughs> so I guess in a way, and, and then of course you're just always you know doing a lot of management, financial stuff, and design work and all that. Uh, what made you want to make video games? Yeah, so so it's actually um, it's actually uh, when I was younger, I had a period of my life when uh, I had to uh, go through kind of a, a, a very difficult and uh, uh, traumatic experience. Um, and through that experience, I actually found a lot of solace and uh, recovery through video games. So afterwards, I thought back and like looked at games like World of Warcraft and League of Legends that I played a ton of, and realized that those games weren't really designed to help me but they ended up saving my life. So what if I start making video games with the intention to help other people? What kind of power can we unlock there? And that's kind of why I started Serenity Forge. That's really the interesting thing that I found out about this company is that the goal mm -hmm. of it. Uh, is that where the name came from? Yeah, kind of. I mean, Serenity Forge uh, came from mostly uh, in our early days, we were getting around talking about game design and just getting really heated about games. I mean, as you can imagine, mm -hmm. you know, gamers, especially game developers, are really, really passionate for design, so we would fight with each other all the time. It's like, no, the text box should be red. No, it should be blue. And then in the end, we realized that, you know, despite all the fighting, we really cared about our game and we really cared about our work. Why don't we, you know, go forward forging Serenity and uh, finding that peace within ourselves? And that's kind of why uh, we're named Serenity. Forge. I really love it. My daughter's named Serenity, so that oh, stuck awesome. out. Yeah. I love the the visual look of your games. They're very beautiful. Is that intentional? Like, did you want to make it like? almost like art just to look at it while you're playing it? Well, yeah. So, so I mean, one of the things I think uh, the, the world doesn't quite recognize right now is that video games are absolutely art, especially in the visual sense. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you look at a painting, and it's it can be a very beautiful painting. Mm -hmm. But for a video game, you know, 60, that's 60 pa paintings per second that you're absolutely, looking at on your absolutely. screen. And, you know, our artists are, you know, the people standing next to us right now. You know, these uh, they're very talented individuals who are able to make this magic on, on the screen. So uh, something that we care about a lot in video games is to uh, create these timeless experiences, something that you can look at you know, 100 years ago or 100 years from now, and it still feels a certain way and still kind of bring about this type of emotion inside you. And to us, that's, that's the narrative, and that's the beauty of games. I like that. Can you tell me a little bit about Once Upon a Coma? Yeah, Once Upon a Coma um, is a game, uh, it's a narrative adventure, a uh, psychological narrative adventure. What does it, that mean? It means, I guess, uh, you know, you can typically watch a movie and it'd be pretty narrative, mm -hmm. um, but then there are some movies that really kind of get in your head, like Silence of the Lambs, for example. So Once Upon a Coma kind of takes a little bit of that, but mostly aims it towards a younger audience. Um, it's uh, the story about Pete, uh, a boy who wakes up from a coma to find out that all the parents in the city went missing. Uh, so he needs to go figure out what's going on and go save uh, his best friend, uh, Wynn, from... Um, uh, from from the wilds. Um, okay. However, uh, you know, as you keep playing, you realize that maybe this world that you're living in isn't quite what it seems. So, you know, you kind of dig a little bit deeper and find out more about uh, what's going on in the story. Does the narrative have different endings depending on gameplay? Um, no, not not currently. Okay. Uh, yeah, because uh, one of the main things that we want players to to realize is 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 really like this very emotional journey from beginning to end. I mean. The, the beauty of games is that while you're playing, you're constantly making choices and you're seeing kind of the results of those choices, uh, you know, from a mechanic and a uh, narrative uh, level. However, you know, the ending of a game, a lot of times, uh, you know, we do have a very specific story that we want to show and it's, okay. it's hard to keep it too dynamic. What's involved in writing a story like that for a game? Because you have to have so many different paths, right? Yeah, I think... Um, the, I, I like to use this quote because I think it's the best way to describe how we write things. And that is when Leo Tolstoy was writing uh, Anna Karenina. Mm -hmm. 
um, there was because uh, Anna, Anna Karenina was um, a, a, a newspaper thing that kind of came out every week, uh, you know, back in the, the, the days. When they had newspapers. Right, exactly. <laughs> uh, it was episodic. Right. So um, when the episode came out that Anna dies in the story, spoilers for those who <laughs> read this thing spoilers. from like hundreds of years ago. Hundred, um, I think after a uh, century, it's okay. Yeah, yeah. Mm, uh, so, so when Anna Karenina actually died in the story, uh, his fans got super pissed at him. Mm -hmm. They're just saying like, oh, how could you kill the, literally the main character? Mm -hmm. The book was named after her. How could you kill her? Um, and his response to that was, I didn't want her to die either. I really, really liked her as a character, but she chose to die. That wasn't my choice. Mm -hmm. And I think that's extremely powerful in describing how writing works. It's because, um, you know, the character is so fleshed out. It's so built to the point where uh, the character is out of your control now as an author. And that's kind of how we write things. We kind of uh, give a lot of descriptions, put it in there, and then see kind of how it moves throughout the throughout right. the story. The, the characters are almost telling the story to you as exactly. you're writing it. Yeah. Yes, I love that. Yeah. That's, a, that's good writing. <laughs> uh, another thing I'm very interested in that you're doing is this Half Past Fate. It's mm -hmm. a romantic comedy, right? Mm -hmm. Video game. Yeah. I love romantic comedies. <laughs> yep. Like I'll, I've seen everyone. I love them. I've never really played a romantic comedy video game. Mm -hmm. Tell me about it, please. Yeah, so so one of the one of the things that we found out once we started doing research for this game is that there really aren't any romantic comedy games. Not that I know If you of. Google like romantic comedy video game, you get like mm -hmm. Dragon Age, which is okay. not a romantic comedy game I, at all. Played, yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, we really wanted to tell the same story that like 51st Dates or Groundhog's Day or Love Actually, or, you know, like these types of stories and put it into a video game. Mm -hmm. um, Honestly, that's that's the thought going into it. So the game features six main characters spanning a period of eight eight and a half years, uh, just over how these characters kind of interact with each other, how the world is fully connected. Love Actually is probably the closest comparison to how the story works, okay. just how uh, everyone in the world is connected. We also feature a very diverse uh, cast of characters from all walks of life. Um, and this is something that we really, really care about. And then ultimately, you it's a very disjointed story as well, so you're constantly jumping through time to like see Love what's Actually, going on. Right? Exactly, okay. yeah. And then in the end, you realize that it all how, how it all ties together. And that's okay. kind of... Uh, that story All we're right. telling. Uh, is there like uh, two main characters that fall in love? Is, is there a hurdle like most romantic comedies? Yeah, so there's actually three couples, so oh, okay. six characters with uh, three pairs that nice. kind of you kind of see how they all come to be. The first couple meet and uh, essentially uh, go on their first date within the first day, just one day of them seeing each other, uh, coincidentally. And then the second couple spans a, a period of uh, eight and a half weeks, so about, about two months. And the, thir uh, the third couple uh, spans the whole eight and a half years, and they've been childhood friends, and then eventually they actually What's uh, the gameplay like? Um, it's very similar to a game called To the Moon, uh, okay. where you walk around, you know, it's very similar to an adventure game. You're similar to like your Monkey Island, you know, your, your old school adventure games. Um, but uh, there's also kind of a very unique visual. We wrote our own engine where um, it's 3D. The game is fully 3D, but it uses pixel art. So the, the visuals are almost similar to Octopath Traveler, if you ever heard of that game. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very cool. Um, do you play? Uh, do you get to pick the character you play, like the male or female, or? Um, so you actually play through all six characters. Okay. So you, uh, for every chapter that you go into, you jump to a different character. It's almost like Game of Thrones or the books. You know, uh, it, it, how how you keep on jumping right. from different perspectives. Okay. Very cool. Uh, yeah. Music for it. Uh, what's the music like in the video game? Did you write um, it for a romantic comedy type? Yeah, style? yeah. It's it's very you know. Poppy. It's very uh, giddy. Uh, depending on the story that you're uh, experiencing, each pair kind of has their own story. Uh, there's a pair that is particularly like driven, very like American uh, startup Silicon Valley business. Mm -hmm. So it's very techy and kind of you know fast paced. And there's a pair that spans the eight years where they're art students, they're photographers, they're uh, you know film, film, uh, cinematographers. Mm -hmm. So they're a little bit more like you know relaxed, casual, just kind of you know a hangout. Uh, so it really depends on the where in the game you are. Awesome. If we haven't hooked people by now, what are some of the other games that uh, Serenity Forge has out that people might like? Yeah, so earlier this year, we launched The King's Bird, which is a momentum-driven platformer title. Uh, we released it on all the consoles, so you know, PS4, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch. Uh, and then uh, later this year, uh, we're also going to be uh, releasing a couple other games, uh, most of which we haven't announced yet, but we'll be bringing uh, one of uh, our older titles, Where the Water Tastes Like Wine, onto consoles. So okay. we haven't announced which console yet, but that'll, that'll be coming out pretty soon. Do you have a favorite console to uh, write for? Yeah, so personally, I would say 
Uh, the Switch is probably one of our favorite consoles, but honestly, all the consoles are amazing to work with. Uh, there's a lot of just uh, you know a lot of hype with uh, some of the new console manufacturers with their you know upcoming stuff. Uh, but you know ultimately, you know we have been working with the PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and Nintendo Switch all the way back to the Wii U, honestly. And uh, you know we we've been working with the these Wii people, U. yeah, for a long time. So they're amazing people, and we love working with all of them. Awesome. Okay, uh, can you tell everybody where they can find out more about uh, the games? and Serenity Forge? Yeah, so you can always follow us on Twitter at Serenity Forge or just our website, uh, serenityforge.com. Um, and then I think we also, yeah, we also have a Facebook page, uh, which is uh, just, you know, facebook.com slash Serenity Forge. Thank you so much, Z, for joining us and being on Thinking Outside the Long Box once again. It was an honor for me to meet you. <laughs> and uh, Thinking Outside the Long Box, hashtag TOTLB.com. And uh, check out more from Serenity Forge. This guy's awesome. This stuff's great. Thank you.